This show is brought to you by Fit Challenge. Fit Challenge is a staple of the New England OCR scene and many people's favorite event, full stop. They hold two obstacle course races a year and a trail series. They have three more of those in 2016 alone. With open waves that go off all day, competitive waves in the morning, and multiple laps available if you want to push yourself, Fit Challenge provides something for everyone. The next race is October 26th, the obstacle course race is November 19th, and check out fitchallenge.org for more information. Hi! (laughs) How's it going? It's going good. Uh, So, um, for the podcast and for the the brand new Facebook Live audience... um, Henry and uh, I are going to be recording not only for the YouTube channel, uh, but also for the podcast, but we are broadcasting to Facebook Live. Now, we don't have the screen in front of us, so we can't see comments, so we'll just wing this and see how it goes and whether it's successful. And if you're watching on Facebook Live, let us know, and we'll uh, do it again maybe next time. I like winging things. We're good at winging things, right? Yeah. Um, so... Uh, to this episode, it's been a while since I've done an Any Spartans TV. Uh, so this time we have Henry Mart. For uh, people who don't know Henry, he is uh, a huge. Uh, he works at Spartan Race. He works uh, does a lot of work for RWB. Owns his own photo company, and he's just a huge go rook enthusiast. And, and what am I missing? I also OCR do things engine. with Oscar Mike. Oh, okay, okay. So we're going to dig into each one of those as we chat. Um, and we don't have, as usual, we don't have an agenda, we don't have a form, we don't have a process to follow. We're just going to wing it and see where we end up. Anarchy. I like Anarchy. it. So, how, what were you doing before OCR? So I, I first met you when? Back in, mm-hmm. when did you first start OCRs? 2012? 2012, I think it was. Okay. So 2012 Spartan Race, I would imagine. Possibly somewhere, yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. Um, so before you got into Spartan racing, before you got into OCR in general, what what were you up to? What was your life like? Because uh, you've got into this pretty heavy, right? Pretty hardcore. More yeah, than a I, lot of people do. I got dragged into it somehow. Not sure how it happened, but it was like summer 2011. Um, I had just gotten out of like a really long relationship. So I'm like, okay. oh, oh shit, I have all this time on my hands now. Yeah. What should I do? And there was a random Facebook ad for a thing called Spartan Race. Yeah. I clicked on it, and the video looked pretty badass, actually. <laughs> so if it was 2011, then that video would have been from 2010, which I ran, so you're yes. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> so so Spartan Race was your rebound. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think of it like that? Never thought of it that way. <laughs> well, you have, you, know, you have more time on your hands, yeah. and you're like, I was already doing like 5Ks, 10Ks, okay. and regular road races, but I'm like, that looks like... This yeah. looks like fun. What, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Get sucked in, <laughs> lose the next four years of your life. <laughs> and it's like, next thing you know, you're like, oh, wait, what, oh, where did time go? Um, so what were you doing professionally? Were you, were you working at that point? Or? Uh, yeah, I was working like in stadiums, arenas, convention centers, like events management. Oh, okay. Okay. Seen some interesting events and concerts. So you, so you had a background that was like, as your future went on, you ended up working for Spartan. It was, do you do now for Spartan what you kind of did before? Certain like, aspects, okay. like uh, the inventory background. Because I had an inventory background when I did events management, and I guess yeah. somebody read my resume at Spartan and was like, hey, we have this guy who could actually count. Because <laughs> <But>, I was <laughs> going to say, isn't inventory management just counting and keeping a list? Well, a, a little bit more than just okay. that. <laughs> but making sure there's enough of these bad boys to go around. Yeah. Okay. Make sure there's medals, finisher tees. Okay. I'm the so, guy who makes sure, who makes sure they, there's shirts for everybody. Got it. Got it. At least at the races I work at, not all the other races. Not, <laughs> not everywhere, just the <laughs> ones everywhere. I work. <laughs> like, don't send me hate mail, please. <laughs> um, so, trifecta medals, 2013. Hmm. I was not working in time. <laughs> <laughs> Good recovery. <laughs> uh, so, so you got into the first race, so that was like 2011. Did you just do one and done for a year and come back the next year, or did you just suddenly go off and find all the local races, hit the road, travel? Funny thing about that, I was still living in Jersey, and my first one I sent up for was Ainsbury 2011. I was registered for that Sunday. So you drove up? I was planning on taking the Greyhound up. Wait, Ainsbury 2011, wasn't that the hurricane? Yes. Ah, okay, <laughs> all right. So I was in New York getting ready yeah. to hop on this bus to go up there because I have family up here. I'm like, it'll yeah. be a fun trip. Yeah. And then we get a notification that it's been canceled, like the bus has been canceled to go to Massachusetts. Yeah. State of emergency. If you don't know, Hurricane Irene, Hurricane Irene blew in, 
I'd ran the Saturday and then they had to shut down Sunday. And that's where the hurricane heat was born because Joe DeSena said, if you can be at the parking lot at five in the morning, I'll make you do burpees and carry heavy shit for a while. And that was the hurricane heat, right? So yeah. did you get into that or were you there? How do you? No, I wasn't able over? to get into the state at got all. It. Got it. So you got, you got locked out. I, well, it depends on your definition of locking out. Yeah. I had to turn back around and I'm like, shit, that was supposed to be my first one. So you found another one, tra- they, cause they offer transfers, right? Yes, um, they automatically transfer everyone over to the following year. So okay. I'm like, but I kind of didn't want to wait till the following yeah. August. And, um, Tuxedo 2012 ended up being my first because of okay. that. I didn't feel like waiting. So one of my roommates saw the video and he's like, that sounds badass. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. So we signed up for Tuxedo 2012 and ran that one. Okay. Next thing we know, we're like, hey, let's do the super. Yeah. Why not? Because well, that would have been the first year of the trifecta, right? Yes. That's so first so year. It, were you on a trifecta hunt? Did you do a beast that year? I ended up doing a beast. Okay. Getting so, the special medal, the yeah. t-shirt, and then the name on the website. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that because that when they used to track it. Um, yeah. Were you? Did you do Killington? I was about to do Killington, but my day job needed me to work. Yeah. So um, they were nice enough and actually transferred me to South Carolina. Okay. All right. So I, I know that was the first year of the Killington Beast. I didn't do that one. I did the next year, um, but I know people who did, and they said it was pretty special. Uh, so you end up doing the beast in South Carolina, and, and was it just Spartan at this point? Had you gone on to do what, you on Tough Mudders or anything? It like was that? just Spartan at this yeah. point because I was I was still fairly new, so I wasn't yeah. 100 into it. Yeah, and it, you didn't have all these local companies popping up left and right like you do nowadays. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so how did you go from? Well, I think I know the answer, but how did you go from from attending a couple of races to ending up where you are now? So you work for Spartan right now, right? Yes. Now, is that considered full-time or part-time or, like, contracting? How does it's that work? kind of part-time contracting, if yeah. that makes this, any sense. So you just do select races or, or, like, regional races? Pretty much they'll send me emails asking if I could work so-and-so race, and yeah. I say yes or no. Okay, all right. I say yes, they book me, and I book my flights, and I go. Okay, and what do you do for them when you go to a race? Because you work race day, right? You don't work in the office, you don't... I do, like, uh, the setup, usually. Okay. So yeah. I'll be there um, the a whole week before doing inventory and helping set up for the most part. Okay. So you get race day off? No. No? <laughs> so if you choose to work, you choose to not race? From Yeah, for the most part, because mm-hmm. um, you can't really work and race at the same time. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I, I know it's something that I've heard from, from people in the past, is if you, if you work for Spartan Race, you tend to not be able to run the Spartan Races, which... For a lot of people, that's like a conflict of interest because they want to yes. work for them because they like running them, and then they find they can't do both. Well, you can do both because you're not always working every single race. Like um, last weekend, I ran Palmerton. Yeah. And uh, last month, uh, I was working the sec- second weekend of Tuxedo, mm-hmm. so I drove down and ran the first weekend. Okay. All right. That's so, a- it's doable, but... Yeah. But you, if you you can't work and race together, it's it's you can't mix. Two. It's very rare that yeah. it can happen, and that makes sense. Yeah, it, it's just I think for a lot of people they they have the uh, the glorious idea of I'll get paid to go and run the Spartan race, and no, it doesn't work. That not way. how it works. You can't jump in expecting to be able to work and race. Yeah. If yeah. for some reason um, they you're able to run a race, then yes, yeah. more power to you. But you can't walk in there expecting to be able to run the race that you're working. Yeah. Um, how many races do you cover a year, roughly? It varies. Um, there's a six-week period where I think I was home for like four nights. Oh, God. Uh, and uh, so how did you end up with the job? Like how? Because, again, like we said, it's a, for a lot of people, it's like their ideal circumstance yeah. to be hired by a company that they enjoy work, running and participating in. Now, I understand that the way you tend to get hired by Spartan is simply being around long enough and becoming like part of the group anyway and then they're like okay fine we'll pay you to do this they just absorb you yeah they just get sick of seeing <laughs> you right <laughs> like oh you're here again here's the staff sure come on yeah go on get on the get on the payroll <laughs> it's like here sign this here we're, we're paying you now and that's pretty much how it goes right just kind of yeah because i was um i was doing a lot of things with the street team because i'm yeah. like down downtime a lot of events for local so i'm mm-hmm. like i can help out why not get some free races and yeah. uh i was asked like hey do you want to get paid doing some of this stuff? I'm like, sure. Is that a trick question? <laughs> Absolutely. So they signed, They had me go down for, um, it was Tuxedo last year, 
and yeah. I end up working in merch, and they're like, hey, we like you. Yeah. Wanna, and, um, we like you, and apparently you can count really well. Wanna try doing this <laughs> thing called collateral? I'm yeah. Like, sure, why not? Yeah, I could do that. I like that. You, we like you and you can count. Um, so you have a good attitude and 10 fingers and you're all set, right? Well, those weren't the sack words, <laughs> but something along those lines. <laughs> or like a buddy of mine said, like, yeah, we figured out his niche. So he awesome. counts things out. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's fine. I mean, cause I think that's, um, it's, you've got to come in with the right attitude, right? You, you volunteer a hell of a lot. Um, you, you show up and you bust your tail and have a decent attitude about it and then see where it goes. Uh, and realistic expectations, I think, is is important. Uh, yeah, so many people who go in with unrealistic expectations, like yeah. the whole getting paid to race, it doesn't work that no. way. Well, and I've seen, I mean, I've only done a couple of, a little bit of volunteering, but uh, when it was over at Barry last year, and even then I saw people who would, uh, almost like they saw volunteering as the gateway to being hired. And it's not just volunteer a lot you've got to have the attitude the skill set and and the look and be in the right place at the right time yeah definitely and Uh, apparently the beard is the right look (laughs) (laughs) grow a beard (laughs) step one grow a beard (laughs) have 10 fingers and be able to count (laughs) problem solved (laughs) there's a running joke at uh barry last year that there are so many of us on staff who had beards you know, I, I was there and I think I heard the same thing because it was very much like that. I think there were maybe two women and all the guys had beards. Yeah, there's at least a dozen of us. There's a photo floor on Facebook right now where it's like a, one of those like Western photos where all standing there with beards. Uh-huh. Like, with serious faces. Uh-huh. Except for I this love it. one guy named Tweak. You see him in the back corner just like smiling with a thumbs up and, and clean shaven. No, he had a beard, but. Okay. <laughs> we're all there like, we're so, all right, guys, serious face, beards, all Western styles. So we're all like this, like, and he's in the background just smiling. <laughs> there's always one. Yeah, there's always one. It's like, damn it, he smiled. So how many races are you covering this year? Are you covering all the Barry races? Yes, but okay. um, for the sprints, I was there for the full cycle. This time yeah. around, I'm only there for the weekend. Okay. And then what about the Super? Oh, well, yeah, for the Super, I'm only there for oh. the weekend. Okay. So um, I'm showing up like working Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then Killington? Not sure, yeah. Not sure? Too far out? Too far out. Because you worked last year, because I remember seeing you in probably back chat, I think. Maybe. Yeah, I had this sweet setup. I was indoors. That's right. Out of the weather. <laughs> um, okay. And then I know that Fenway is completely separate, right? No, There's no... Like, Fenway's complete separate team. Well, a lot of us still work, like, standard race. Like, last year okay. I worked Fenway as well. Yeah. Because I... Last year I did Fenway, and I hopped right down to Citizen Bank Park. Okay. All right. Very convenient because, like, all right, we're done. All right, let's try not to Philly now. So, along with the Spartan stuff, obviously, I mostly see you online doing a lot of RWB, and then, as you said earlier, the Oscar Mike stuff. So, how does that? How did that all come about? Like, how did you end up? Were you doing a lot of charity and, and veteran work before you came up here? Before you came to Spartan, or is this something that it all came together? Because there tends to be a lot of overlap. Well, with the RWB thing, I had recently been discharged from the National Guard. Oh, okay. So I was like, oh, oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. So I was like kind of looking for, like something was missing. Yeah. And uh, a buddy of mine, I saw a photo wearing some shirts at Team RWB yeah. on social media. So I'm like, what is this? I kind of Googled it. I'm like, oh, this looks cool. Yeah. I was still living in Jersey. And when I sent up, there's no chapters in Jersey. Okay. So I'm like, oh, I'm part of this now. They yeah. sent me a shirt, but there's no chapters in my state. Yeah. So they, um, they, Assigned me to the New York City chapter, which is fun, except for the fact that it was like at least an hour train ride yeah. to their events. So I was part of the group. I wasn't really involved until I moved up here. And when did like, you move up to New England? October 2013. Okay. All right. And um, for Fenway, I had thrown my RWB shirt in my rucksack, and I had um, my OEW shirt and a couple other things. And a buddy of mine was very involved in the Danbury, Connecticut chapter. Mm-hmm. He went up to me, he's like, hey, you brought your RWB shirt? I'm like, yeah, why? He's like, we're having a huge heat put on your shirt. Let's go. <laughs> You're one of us now. <laughs> I was always like part of the organization, yeah. but like I wasn't as involved because there was no chapter by me. Yeah. And, he's, and he's like, oh, did you transfer to Boston yet? No, here's the Boston cha- chapter captain, Yeah. which at the time wasn't Chris. It was uh, Joe Henningsen. Okay. So he's like, all right, this is the chapter captain. This is your guy now. Yeah. He'll get you whatever you need. <laughs> So what do you do with it? So for people who don't know, what you give the, like the, the 50,000 foot overview of what RWB is 
And then what, how, cause I know the chapters, there's a lot of local chapters out here, right? Is, is New England a busy region for them? Well, for New England, we have, um, one in Rhode Island. We yeah. have, um, Boston, Worcester. We have Springfield now. Okay. We have one in the Berkshires as well. Yeah. We don't talk about them. They're kind of far. <laughs> <laughs> they're not really us. <laughs> they're, they're Western Mass. <laughs> <laughs> they be dragons over in Western Mass. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what happens in Western Mass. I, I hear that a lot. And Western Mass is usually defined as anything outside 495. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, I hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's a Manchester chapter now. Yeah. Um, okay. There's two in Maine. We even have one in Burlington, Vermont now. Um, so, so RWB as an organization, they're focused on veteran athletic pursuits. Is that correct? Well, by textbook definition, it's um, enriching the lives of America's veterans by yeah. connecting them to the community through fiscal and social activities. Yeah, but it's more than that. It's like almost like um, rebuilding that brotherhood that you lost from yeah. when you were in the military. But it's not just open to military because yeah. one of the goals is to um, bridge the gap between both veteran and civilian communities. Okay. Yeah. So our membership's open. It's free for anybody to join. Yeah. And it's open to both veterans and civilians. Yeah. We don't care w- where you come from. Sure, come on in. Yeah. We have ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> we have cookies. Come on we in. We have cookies. Come on in. <laughs> but like, so we host like different events and we do partnerships. Like in the Boston chapter, we have partnerships with uh, CrossFit Lowell and Lowell. Yeah. They, um, every month they, give us a class just for RWB members and veterans to just walk off the street and participate for free in this class. Yeah. So we'll, that's the Facebook life <laughs> kicking off. I'll see if anyone had a comment and they, uh, <laughs> they may. <laughs> and so. another gym we partnered up with is, uh, RX strength training down in Somerville. Yeah. Every month, uh, Jeff Buttersworth puts us through this torture class. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. really torture, but it's like really, Go to class, focus on like team building. Mm-hmm. We do a lot of buddy workouts. Yeah. And, uh, another place we do partnership with is Marathon Sports in Boston. Yeah. And in Mansfield, where, uh, Shane, the manager from the Boston store, he pretty much just welcomes us to their weekly run. And he's like all about our day being helping veterans. We do like joint events with them. Yeah. We so did- I, I see a ton of photos on social media posts from, from people from NES because there's a fairly big overlap between the groups. And there's always the, is it the Lowell week, weekly run? Yes, we have weekly? three weekly runs. So okay. one in Lowell, there's on Thursday evenings. We have one in Mansfield, also on Thursday evenings. And then our main one's in Boston on yeah. Wednesday evenings. And I think I mostly see the CrossFit Lowell workouts get posted. Yes. Um, so, so RDB is free to anyone, but it's, it's, you know, primarily about getting veterans back out into society and giving them, yes. giving everybody involved. Um, and what, what's your role with them? Cause it's, my understanding again is there's a lot of, uh, obviously being military focused, there's a lot of structure in it, roles and jobs. Whereas like NES, we just wing it. Well, we're good at winging it, but, uh, well, RWE doesn't seem to wing it. Just, well, Chris and I wing it sometimes. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you do it well enough. Nobody notices. <laughs> yeah. We're like, yes, we meant to do that. Sorry, Chris. We're letting our secrets out now, <laughs> but we do have a structure like, um, Chris is a chapter captain. Yeah. And then I'm the outreach director. And then we have like a athletic director. We have a social director. Okay. We have somebody who does our, um, our newsletters. Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, I mean, we, we do that, but <laughs> still wing it. <laughs> <laughs> like we do like structure calendars and everything. Like every quarter, I'll put like a calendar. Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, this is our main events. But then we also have other smaller events as yeah. well. Um, and then do you do similar stuff for, uh, for Oscar Michael? Cause that's a similar idea, right? It's... Yeah. Well, I don't do the same exact thing with Oscar Mike. Okay. It's more of like a smaller role, like I'll photograph and film things for okay. Oscar Mike. Yeah. Now what, so for the people who don't know, um, what's, what's the difference between RWB and an Oscar Mike? What's the two, uh, groups? They're two separate charities. They're not yes. related, right? Um, so, so what's the difference between the two? Oscar Mike, um, has the Oscar Mike Foundation where okay. their goal is to get wounded veterans back to being active and, um, on the move because Oscar Mike is military terminology for on the move. Oh, okay. I had no idea. So their goal is to get veterans who are injured or disabled, well, not really disabled because it was a horrible word, but yeah, adaptive, yeah. um, service members back to being on the move, being active. Okay. Uh, they recently had a rug, their rugby team win some sort of championship, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, I've seen um, adapted rugby and, and any of the adapted sports. It's insane. It's insane. They're yeah. really hardcore. Yeah, they are. 
so what do you do? And so for those of you, you tend to be um, like photographer in trail, like they drag you around wherever they go and it's your job to keep up. Well, like, well, like, um, I got involved through a buddy of mine, um, Earl. He was, he got, he became like their spokesperson. Yep. And I always raced with him, and then I know Earl, social media Earl. I don't know Earl as a person, <laughs> but yeah, actually, yeah, because um, we always race together, mm-hmm. and he got involved with Oscar Mike. He's like, yeah, check this group out. Okay. And I was always with my GoPro or something yeah. similar, so I'm like, yeah, here, I'll make, the, I'll edit this for you guys, and here, have it for free. <laughs> So I like that. If you show up with a camera, that's it. It's the guy with the camera. You're one of us now. Follow us. <laughs> that's how it works all the time. <laughs> but I was always racing with him anyway, and I always had the footage. So, yeah. and it's a it's a great cause that I strongly support. Yeah. So I was like, whatever you guys need, here you go. So you've you've come kind of to a point now where you're you're chasing people around with a camera, right? And it sounds you- very creepy. <laughs> Windows are not involved. It's, he's typically actually following them, and they typically invite, typically invited him. Typically. Typically. So now you've just opened up, uh, Mart Photography? Uh, yes, uh, so Marte, yeah. Marte, sorry. Yeah. So you've just opened up your own photography business, right? Now, as many people know, I'm also a photography geek, and that's something that, while I would have loved to do, I did not have the balls to do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so how did you end up opening up a photography business? Like, uh, so for people who don't know, there's a really big difference between the guy with the camera that takes <laughs> photos for people and then actually having a place that people come to and give you actual money that you can actually pay bills with <laughs> and actually run a business. It's nice getting money. It is. And that's it not is. common when no. you have a camera. It's really not And those common. things are really freaking expensive. <laughs> they are. Like, um, <laughs> a friend wanted to check out this um, art open studio thing okay. near, nearby me. Like yeah. the place... The um the building where I currently have my studio is about ten minutes away from me. Yeah, and I never knew it existed. Okay, and it's called Western Avenue Studios. It's the largest art colony in the country, and it's in Lowell, Massachusetts. For yeah. anyone who doesn't know and needs a photo shoot, Lowell, Massachusetts, <laughs> and open studios every first Saturday of the there month. There you go. <laughs> yeah, P- plug away. So you went for an uh, for an open studio just to check out check out the art. Yeah, because uh, there's tons of art. There's glass blowers, woodworkers, oh, wow. painters. Huh. Um, there's even guys who do sculptures. Yeah. Like, there's a guy who's recreating some sort of Buddha sculpture by hand. Huh. And, and so they, what, they rent out studio space at a price that artists can afford? Yes, it's, it's actually <laughs> reasonable. Yeah. So I, I, I think I have about 260 square feet, and okay. I pay to 26 a month now. Okay. And that's yeah. all utilities included, yeah. Wi-Fi, everything. And when they gave me the price, I was like, wait, that's it? They're like, yes, that's it. Like, sign me up. Yeah, where do I sign yeah. up? Yeah. Uh, so you open the studio. I mean, you, I've seen photo shoots come out. I mean, you do solid work. I mean, you do studio stuff. You do, like, outside, uh, you know, regular stuff outside. Um, do you focus on a specific genre? Do you just, is it athletes? Is it whoever shows up? Pretty much whoever shows yeah. up. I kind of wing it sometimes. Yeah. I don't like being stuck in one specific genre. Yeah. Like, there's so many photographers, like, in our build. We have photographers in the building, and... One, there's one corner of the building where you'll have one fine art photographer, you'll have one portrait photographer, and then you'll have one who's more like artistic landscape. Yeah. And then you have me who's just like, oh yeah, I'll do all of that. I'll do anything. <laughs> I'll do anything. <laughs> um, so who, who have you photographed uh, that we know from the group so far? Because I know you've had and and Marie, Andy Marie? Crap. Yes, Andy. I'm terrible with names. Uh, yeah, Andy and I recreated a painting yeah. that's hanging off on our on Earl's uh, wall, actually. Okay. So, like, the whole outfit, the mask thing, the buff, yeah. was right off a painting on That's his wall. Awesome. Those are really striking. <laughs> I like those. So, we are like, all right, let's recreate the shoe, like, yeah. the painting, like, if she came to life, yeah. more or less. That's awesome. And it's, my suit is in the old mill building, so we had tons of old-looking things and yeah. railroad tracks. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, you- you like that one. The next one's gonna be a lot more geekier, and it's gonna be. I like geeky. I'm big into geeky too. That's it's gonna awesome. be very mind blowing. The next one. That's fantastic. And so, do you do? Uh, do you keep your a day job, or do you just kind of bounce around different roles now and, you know, pay the rent, pay the bills with with Spartan with photography? Pretty much uh, with yeah. Spartan and photography. So I, I could I could use more photography work. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I also like on my I have a website set up mm-hmm. since I go on the road quite often. Yeah, so it's difficult to fulfill prints when you're on the road. Yeah, so, like I 
found this like great website, Photo Shelter. Yeah, yeah, I know Photo Shelter. I use Zenfolio, but similar idea, yeah. Oh, yeah, would you partner up with different printers and they mm-hmm. fulfill the orders for you, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Because um, there's one time I was on the road for two weeks and I had an order come in the day after I went on the road. Yeah. Yeah, so. it's really <laughs> tricky. Now I'll show you what I do later on. It's a similar idea. Um, so I mean, just kind of coming back around. So you've you've gone from a full day job. You found the OCR bug, like like everybody finds the OCR bug. That's listened to this show anyway. Um, and now it's effectively your life, right? It's yes. the athletics, the Spartan working, and all that kind of stuff. So does that take away from your enjoyment in running? Does working a race take away from actually participating and going out there and doing the race? It's not the same anymore. Yeah. Like, there's still enjoyment in it, but it's not exactly the same because, um, yeah. I guess, a different mindset. Yeah. Because it, it's kind of hard to get away from the work mindset as, as well as fully just run in without any worries. Yeah. Now, did you ever run a course, or did you ever run as a competitively, like, not as an elite athlete, but did you ever go out there specifically to get time? Because I know mostly, for most of us, once we've been around a while, we tend to run the course specifically with friends, specifically with groups, and we don't really give a crap about time anymore, <laughs> which I assume is yeah. where, where you're probably at, right? Yeah, I don't yeah. care about time. Uh, now, did you ever do that? Did you ever run the courses and be really concerned about where you placed? Or? Not really. Okay, that's fair. I, I know some people do, and yeah. yeah. Uh, There's more things to life than placing. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd agree with that. End of the day, what is that place really going to get you? Uh, uh, nothing. Well, no. may, maybe a block. Maybe a block, but maybe a block. <laughs> I, I'd rather be the I'd rather be the guy who's crashed down on the ground, giving somebody a boost over the wall, yeah. than the guy who's placing. I feel like I get more enjoyment out of helping somebody over the wall, yeah, or uh, treating somebody who's having like heat this this auction or something versus running to, to place. So, have you done? Uh, there's obviously been a lot of um, videos and photos when. I think it might have been Oscar Mike were doing a lot. Oh, no, it was uh, the guys that run with the gas masks. OEW. OEW. So do you ever do any of those bigger, more dramatic, like, team team times around a course? Or is it much more low-key for when <clears throat> when you and your guys go out? Well, it depends. We're all about the shenanigans. <laughs> That's also true. And I've actually done quite a few races with OEW as well. Okay. Uh, and now, you're, speaking of shenanigans, you're also a big Goruk fan, <laughs> right? So how, so Goruk, how many have you done Goruks? Ballpark. Because I understand that well, they're like Pringles. You do one, you end up doing 20, and you can't stop. Yeah. I don't do them as much as I used to. Yeah. Because I actually took a break from them for about a year or so, and then okay. I came out of retirement. Well, they, according to uh, Andy... Air quote, retirement. Retirement. <laughs> yeah. She says if you last about a year while I'm doing one, you're technically considered retired. Fair enough. So okay, so you I, came out of retirement. Yeah, for the big RDB one that yeah. we did with St. Paddy's Day. Okay. That was my own retirement. So, what is it about Gorook? I don't do Gorooks. I don't personally have any, like, I my brain isn't wired <laughs> to see any attraction <laughs> in Gorook. So what the hell is it about Gorook? Why should somebody do a Gorook? It's a... It's an interesting community. Like it's well, okay, I'll agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> there, like, there is a big good air quotes again, of, right? Yes. Interesting community. Interesting community. <laughs> but it's like the team building, yeah, that they focus on. Like you see a lot of people, like, random strangers, just come together, and by the end of the event, you have an actual team and like a sometimes even more than just a team. You see, that happens in the pub on a Friday night. <laughs> Some of the, the pubs afterwards, after we're done with the event. <laughs> or before sometimes. Yes, sometimes before. before and afterwards. Okay, fair enough. Because, you know, yeah, meet first, you know, meet each other. Yeah. Then do the van and like, you know what? It's 9 a.m., let's go have brunch and have a couple of drinks. See, I, I, I nearly ended up doing a go rook. It didn't happen for various reasons, and, and I never felt the drive to go back and do it. I don't know why. But like but, I, but they always fascinate me. Like I, they're interesting. Yeah, I, uh, I I own several of the bags. The bags are awesome. The gear is good. But yeah, I never quite went back to a challenge. <laughs> yeah, and Gorok's the only reason I've been in the Charles more than once. Uh, why would you ever go in the Charles more than once? Because a cadre <laughs> told you to. <laughs> cadre says, "Hey, go in the water." 
you just don't ask questions. You jump in the water. You do. Now, do you travel a lot for uh, for races you're not working? Do you travel for for go rooks for you know for these um, uh, um, veteran waves when you're not actually working? Not as much as I used to. Yeah. So I used to be one of those trifecta chasers. How many trifectas do you have? Not as many as you would think, actually. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> as a whole, that's a good question. He's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it was like somebody actually made me count all my medals on my medal rack the other day. It was a couple oh, weeks geez. ago. So it was a... Off memory, or did you stand in front of them and count? I actually had to stand in front of them and count them. Because I'm looking at this lot up here, and I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like, oh, I hope nobody ever asked me to do that. I think I'm mean, was... I think I'm up to, like, uh, 70-something. Yeah, I I don't know if I'm at 70-something, but I wouldn't want to try and remember all these <laughs> damn races. Yeah, and then you have, apart from, like, the medals, you have, like, the Gorug patches, and yeah. then you have, like, the Hurricane Heat dog tags as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. And oh, other yeah, random dog tags. I have dog tags. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, we'd be in trouble if we tried to count them from memory. Yeah... My memory's not that great. No. No, mine either. I can usually remember like two weeks ago and two weeks ahead, and that's about it. Exactly. Yeah, I, I even have like the Reebok Invitational Dog decks hanging there. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do that one. I that know was I a didn't fun race. Um, so, so I always ask a question when, when anyone's in here. Um, and actually, I'm usually talking to race directors who are professional, like building courses and stuff. So it'd be interesting to ask you. Where is OCR going? Like, in your perspective, as someone who doesn't run competitively, isn't building courses professionally, but like enthusiast through and through, right? Where is OCR going? What do you see as I mean, Spartan get a lot of crap for their obstacle, lack of innovation, Battlefront get their own crap, everybody's getting crap for different things. You can't please everyone. <laughs> no, you can't please everyone. So when you look at, uh, at the future of OCR, maybe the next 12 months, the next two years, What's happening next? I feel like it's still continuing to grow up, both as a sport and the industry. Yeah. And especially now with the um, Spartan Ultimate Team Challenge. Yeah. That brought more focus on Oscar course racing. So now as a Spartan employee, do you see, do you see any kind of numbers or growth or um, stats around what the impact that those shows have made? Like, do you, do you hear about it maybe on internal mail? Like, hey, you know, we, we had 10% growth because of the show or, the website had more hits because of the show. Do you see any of that? Not my department. <laughs> no, your department. Fair enough. That's fair. Uh, I'm just fascinated by that. Like, I always want to know what other people see as the OCR world next, because I think everybody has a bias. You know, if, if you're a race director, you see more people coming. If you're an enthusiast, maybe you see new obstacles. Like, everyone has a bias. Right. I'm just, I'm always interested in what's next. You're def- you definitely see, like, on a regular basis at races. Yeah. As both a racer and a setup, you see... Like the car, like the crowds getting more diverse and more yeah. people coming out of the woodwork and trying races. So you see a lot more like newbies and people ripped off the couch kind of situations. Yes. Like um, the one that when I ran the super last weekend, I gave out at least half a mile of water to people on the course that were brand new, first time doing a race yeah. ever. I right, so when two maybe three years ago at New Jersey, um, I don't know what it is about New Jersey, but New Jersey seemed to get a lot of new people. And a lot of new people who were woefully unprepared. Back then it was only a super distance, but, uh, I remember vividly, like, guys in cut off jeans and Chuck Taylors. That sounds about right. Yeah. And, and they were clearly, like, not wearing it because they were so tough they could get away with cut off jeans and Chuck Taylors. They were wearing it because they had no idea what to expect. Because they were like, why not? They were winging it. Yeah. They'd been dragged along by a buddy or they, you know, they'd hopped in the car one day. And I, I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I see people doing that and I think, are they going to come back? Like, did they have any fun, you know, when they went home and they, they did they actually have any fun that day? They're probably like, that sucks. <laughs> okay. I'm never doing that again. I guarantee at least 50% of them a day or two later, they're like, you know what? I want to come back and yeah. do it again. Yeah. It's difficult to just do one and not come back. It is. I think I've only ever spoken to a small group of people who say, you know, like, oh, they ran a race and that was enough for them. I don't think I run into that very often at all. No, it really doesn't, because most people, they want to, like, they have, after a while, like a couple of days, once all the heel, all the bruising and the swelling goes down, <laughs> and they see the metal, they're like, I want another one. And they forget about how much it hurts. Yes. Yeah. They forget about the, how much it sucked. Yeah. And, like, the bad parts, and they just remember, 
crossing the finish line or they'll get their race day photos like a week later and be like, yeah, wow, that's a really cool photo. I have a new Facebook photo or a new Tinder photo or something like that. Where people new use Tinder that photo. <laughs> Whatever the cool kids use these days, right? <laughs> wherever, wherever the cool kids use these days, either Facebook, Twitter, they get the photos and they put it on there. And it's like the cool new thing now to have a race photo. I think Snapchat is the, the cool thing these days. And yeah, but you don't I'm, really use profile photos for Snapchat. Oh, I have no idea. I'm too too old to know how to, sna- how to Snapchat. <laughs> I've tried. I don't get it. You're not missing much. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, so, all right, well, we're getting to the point where we can start wrapping down, but uh, I had a question for you. You work race days, and race days are usually full of all kinds of people. What's the, so you, like we just talked about the newbies, the people who show up in jeans and don't know what they're expecting. When you're working race days, what's the kind of, do you have a crazy story from race day that you've, uh, you know, someone crazy you've worked story. out being like, you're going to have a bad day, or, you know, those kind of things. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> what, what sites do you see when you're working race day? You see some interesting sites, like people dress up in all sorts of weird things, including like males dressed like in male thongs sometimes running around. Uh, sadly, we sometimes know those people too. Yes, sadly, we know those people too. And, and they want to hug you. <laughs> yes. Apparently, I get a lot of hugs from random strangers. Yeah. Well, no, they're not strangers. They're people that well, know you're yes. wearing mankinis. <laughs> yes. I, I'm, I'm thinking of one person in particular, but... <laughs> I am thinking of that same person as well. <laughs> and we're trying hard not to. <laughs> <laughs> I had just finished getting those images out of my head. Yeah, well, they're back. <laughs> yes, they're back. I feel like a tuxedo I was being followed around by the mankini. Oh, God. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> But, like, you see all these different sites, like, the people from Walks of Life. Yeah. Like, my favorite racers aren't, like, the elites who run the course in 40 minutes. It's, like, the last racer. Yeah. Like, it's always, the like... The guy at the end. Yeah, the guy at the end, like... They always have an interesting story as to how they got there and what kept them going through the entire yeah. course. Yeah. It's, like, I'd rather be at the finish line for the last racer than for the elites that cross the finish line. Nothing against the elites, but I feel... I. Relate more to the the last racer, yeah, because it takes more, I guess, um, determination to stay on the course that long, yeah. Especially uh, with the heat, like in Palmerton, um, the last racer, I forgot what time they crossed, but it was pretty dark out, yeah. And to continue going up and down the hill once it got dark and you stopped seeing people, that's a lot of determination. I think there's a there's always a lot of stories. I mean, that's where the Chris Davis story came from. Yes, you know, he was the last guy off the course and. Um, I agree with you. I mean, the last guys always have the, the best stories. Because yeah, I think it was um, at the Barry Sprint, or the Boston Sprint, mm-hmm. the last racer, it was these three uh, women. One of them already walked in with a bad ankle. Yeah. She taped it up and they still went on course because she said that she had signed up with her friends and she wasn't going to let them do it by, her, by themselves. Cool. So the three of them walked the entire course at their own pace. And even though she was in pain... They still finish the course. That's awesome, and and I think there's a every event we go to, the stories like that, and I think we don't always see them, and you know it's uh, they tend to happen later in the day, towards the back of the pack. Um, yeah, when most of the people have already cleared out the festival yeah. area. That's why one of my favorite zones to cover is the finish line. Yeah, because you see not just the last race, but so many interesting people cross the finish line. You're like, wow, this person did this. This person's been sitting like this person's in a wheelchair. Yeah. At the Palmerton Super, um, Lindsay from Team Believe was the first paralegic to get a trifecta. Oh, wow. And they brought her wheelchair up and down the mountain several yeah. times. That's awesome. They even um, lifted up her legs and she wheelbarrowed up and down. Oh, God. <laughs> That's awesome. I love stories like that. Yeah, uh, and she still finished. Yeah. Um, I did a, uh, a 10K race in the UK when I went back, and it was one of the muddiest races I've come across but it was also in open field like really really steep sloped field and they had a section of the course that was probably a good two kilometers in length that was snaked down the hill up the hill down the hill up the hill like this <laughs> about five up and downs you sure norm wasn't there <laughs> well even worse each of the up and downs had an obstacle so the ups had hurdles that you had to step over <laughs> and the downs would have a crawl, and there was a guy in a wheelchair, and his team were bringing him through the course, and I saw them at these hurdles, and there were, th- so there were three up sections that had hurdles, 
and I'm not talking like two or three hurdles, we're talking waist high, probably ten of them on each of these uphills, and they, every time, picked this whole freaking chair up, lifted it over, lifted it over, <laughs> lifted I was like, oh my god, that's that looks brutal. Oh yeah. Uh, the determination to just do yeah. that sort of thing and just continue pushing regardless of yeah. your physical abilities. So, closing question. Your favorite race. race, Not so much race brand, but your favorite like race day. What's your best memory, whether you were working, whether you were whatever you were doing, your favorite race? It's funny because uh, my favorite race is actually the, the Fenway Sprint. Okay. It's just funny because I'm a Yankees fan. Oh, dear. <laughs> I grew up in New York, so that's that's uh, why well, I don't care. But yeah. now you've put it out there, you might get lynched on your yep. way to Fenway next I'll week. I'll probably get time. lynched. <laughs> I'm sure they'll have sharpshooters on the rooftop, or they'll have my picture at the game when I try walking in. They're like, "Oh yeah, you're banned from the building." Or so something. we're gonna buy you a drill shirt on the back of the Yankees fan, and we'll send you in and we'll see what happens. Um, what could possibly go wrong? So why the Fenway Sprint? Because I grew up. Um, Playing baseball and okay. being a huge baseball fan. So it's the baseball connection? The baseball connection. Yeah. And even though it is Fenway Park and. Yeah. You don't burst into flames when you walk in. I don't burst into flames, surprisingly. <laughs> I was waiting for it to happen, especially last year when yeah. I was working Fenway. It's like each day walking in, like, oh, wait. I I'm going to get the flames. <laughs> but it's just the whole atmosphere. Like, it's one of those races that you're running around the stadium, which you typically don't get to do. Yeah. Up and down the stands, the bleachers, um, the Green Monster, which is yeah. a great view from up there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll and, concede that. Oh, it's a good view. Oh, yeah. Good view. You go into the clubhouse, dugouts, even yeah. get to touch the Green Monster when you walk next, when yeah. you run next to it. And your hand didn't fall off when you touched it. No, it didn't, surprisingly. It's amazing how that works. I know. <laughs> I, I felt like somebody was like watching me the whole time. <laughs> and the, the cool thing about the stadium races, at the end of it, you're not completely covered in, like, you can still, it has a huge social aspect that I, I have to say that the the biggest advantage for me for doing Fenway was to be able to finish the race, walk out of the venue, and go straight to a bar, and not have to get cleaned up, not have to change, be totally okay. That's one of the things I love about yep. the Cena races. Yeah, that, that was a huge advantage. Cena races tend to be more social just because of that yeah. aspect. Except it's in November and it's usually twenty five degrees, so it's social as long <laughs> as you can feel your limbs. I typically run in shorts and a t-shirt. Well, it's the standing around afterwards bit that's horrible. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I always got a lot of weird stares as in, that's all you're wearing. Yeah. Yes. I've done that. I, I did that. At OCR Worlds, it was 30 degrees and I ran out of tank top. So or it's fine. <laughs> or when you get the weird looks because you're just in a t-shirt and ranger panties. And it's yeah, I don't get the Ranger <laughs> Penny thing. That might be another reason I don't like doing go rooks. <laughs> I don't like seeing that much of a, a man's leg. <laughs> well, I have nice legs, so you know. I gotta oh, show is that them what off. it is? Man's legs, they like nice legs. So I, I, I gotta make sure I gotta show them off and stuff like that. And Fair they're enough. very cozy. So if you've made it this far in the podcast, leave a comment. Does Henry have nice legs? And if he does, well, we'll see what the popular vote is. So. I, I I think it'll be a pretty good vote. <laughs> All right, thanks, Henry.